message this morning is a very simple but I think very important one. Those are often the important ones, the simple ones. And it's this. Are you converted? Are you converted? That's an important question that we should periodically ask ourselves. And you might be thinking, I hope not, well, Pastor Doug, you're perhaps saying to yourself indignantly, of course we're converted. What are we doing in church if that's not the case? But, you know, even for those who are in the church, I think it's healthy and biblical for us to ask that question. I base that on a scripture, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. The Apostle Paul says this, Examine yourselves whether you are in the faith. Now, that's a challenge, a command, a mandate from the Word of God that we should examine ourselves. We sometimes examine each other to say whether or not we think someone else is in the faith. But Paul says we should examine who? Examine yourselves whether or not you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. Some versions render that reprobate rebels. God is inviting us to periodically evaluate, test, examine ourselves. You know, um, before you go to court, if you should have to go to court, and you're going to stand before the judge, a good attorney will prepare his client by testing them how they're going to be behave and respond and react on the stand. They prepare you. And uh, because you want to be ready, you want to be examined to know how you're going to stand when you're actually in the great court scene. And create a lot of scenarios of questions that the prosecuting attorney might ask. And so you might know how to, to respond. There's a preparation that takes place. Well, we're going to have a big court date someday. And God is inviting us that now while probation lingers and the door of mercy is open, examine yourselves. Are you a real Christian? Or as I phrased it in the title, are you converted? Now, um, you might be wondering, well, define conversion. What do you mean by conversion? What is conversion? Well, conversion, the way Jesus states it, is very simple. It represents the new birth. John 3, 3, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. We've got to know we're converted, we're born again, that we're new creatures. How many of you, at some time in your life, owned a Volkswagen Bug? I just wonder. Popular car, I had one. No, I had two. Not at the same time. I had two Volkswagen Bugs. How many of you remember... I haven't seen any lately, but while they were still making the original Volkswagen Bugs, the new ones are, I mean, I'm sure they are a lot more dependable, but they're just not as much fun as the old ones. The old ones were rolling miracles, weren't they? <laughs> and, you know, it, it would be a good car to be your first car. My first car was a Volkswagen. Anyone else? A Bug? Yeah, because, you know, they're virtually indestructible. You break them down, you could usually fix them with duct tape and rubber bands and things that, practical things like that and make them run a little bit longer. I'm embarrassed to tell you the first one that I had, I had, you know, in New York City we don't drive cars. We subway, bus, taxi. And I basically grew up not knowing how to drive. Didn't own my first car until I was about 19. First one was a Volkswagen. And I remember uh, looking for the radiator. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you that, but of course they don't have one. They're air-cooled unlike most cars. And uh, I thought I found it under the front hood. <laughs> What's there? You don't fill the gas in the side or the back, but you open the hood to fill the gas. <laughs> I won't tell you the whole story. But I really learned some hard lessons. But you know, the thing still managed to run in spite of all that. Um, but I remember they had these, what they called conversion kits for Volkswagens. And somebody came up with a clever design. They really loved their VW Bug. And they took body parts that were designed after a Rolls-Royce. That Rolls-Royce square hood with the Rolls-Royce, you know, angel thing on the front or whatever it is. And a little Rolls-Royce uh, tailgate. And, and they, they painted it all black. And 
you could put these Rolls Royce body parts on your Volkswagen to make your Volkswagen look like a Rolls Royce. But it was really a rolling joke, wasn't it? Because you knew it still, when it came down the road, it sounded like an electric blender. You know, you could always tell when a Volkswagen, I almost said by accident, you could always tell when a Volkswagen was passing you, but that never happened. You could always tell when you were passing a Volkswagen, especially the buses, they never could go fast enough. Is it always sounded like you're going by a blender. And they made that nah sound. <laughs> but here it looks, you know, on the outside like a Rolls Royce, but it's not a Rolls Royce. And you know, you can't help but wonder, there's a lot of people that on the exterior that want to look like Christians. It says on the way to heaven, but you can just listen to it and you know there's something wrong inside. That it's just a bug inside. It's not a luxury sedan. Conversion is the process where we are transformed from being motivated by living self-centered lives to where we are living a life for God. That's I think a good definition. Conversion is where we are transformed from living self-centered lives to living a life for God. It's very important for us to ask ourselves a question, are we converted? Conversion is a change of mind issuing from a change of heart and leading to a change of life. You know, sometimes you travel overseas if you want to spend the money of the local country, you must convert your currency into their denomination. And uh, otherwise it's worthless. That's even more so when you come home. A lot of places in the world will take American dollars, but uh, you won't find too many places that will take your rubles here in, uh, or your rupees, or even your pesos here in North America. It must be converted. You must be converted. You must be born again if you would live in heaven. Now, it's not safe to assume that because we go to church, that means we're automatically converted. There's a story in the Bible about a Pharisee and a publican. Luke chapter 18, verse 12. You know this. It's a parable Jesus tells. Two men went up to the temple to pray. Two different people that go to church. One was a Pharisee, the other a publican or a tax collector. Pharisees had a reputation for being the most religiously astute, zealous of the believers in the time of Christ. They were very particular about how they obeyed God. Publicans were, well, they were sort of your... Well, tax collectors then and tax collectors today are very different. The tax collectors in the time of Christ were considered your party animals. They, they hung out with the prostitutes. They, they drank, they lived lavishly, they were considered very sinful. That's why they chastised Jesus when he went to the house of Matthew for, a fool, for food. rather, And the people said to Jesus, he's hanging out with publicans. So these two men who are labeled, as far as the world is concerned, very different. They go to the same church and they pray. And the Pharisee, he stands and prays thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector who was on the back pew. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And he began to cite uh, all of his good deeds. The publican, though, would not so much as lift up his eyes unto heaven, but bowed his head, he smote upon his breast, and he uttered a very simple prayer. Lord God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He came not pleading his goodness, but pleading for mercy. Then Jesus makes a very interesting observation. That man, the publican, left the church that day forgiven and not the Pharisee. Which of the two was converted? The publican. Now why do I say this? There is a very real danger that many who go to church have gone to church for years. Their parents went to church and their grandparents. They're in church all the time. And they think that because they hang around in the church and they frequent the church that that automatically means they're converted. 
they can be more lost than any pagan on the street and not know it and that's a very dangerous condition they have enough exposure to church and religious things and religious family religious school